Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello and welcome to this lecture on Neoplasia. In this lecture, we will uh, talk about uh, the hallmarks of cancer, the, the fundamental properties of cancer, what are known as the hallmarks, the phenotypic and biological characteristics. And uh, we will take up one of the male, main hallmarks of cancer, which is um, uncontrolled growth. And we will try to see what is the molecular mechanism behind this uh, particular uh, hallmark of cancer. Okay, uh, this phrase, the hallmarks of cancer, was uh, uh, first used and published in the Cell by Weinberg and his colleagues in 2011, and they have caught the attention of uh, all the uh, uh, people who study cancer all over the world, because they sort of in a nutshell uh, try to tell you what uh, are the uh, properties of a cancer cell. So, it is it's almost a complete definition of a cancer cell. So, let us go over each of these uh, a little bit and then uh, uh, we will go to the first one, the self-sufficient growth signaling, the most important aspect of a cancer cell, uh, a little bit more in detail in the rest of the lecture. So, firstly, a cancer cell has self-sufficient growth signaling, which means it can, uh, it is self-sufficient, it does not need external agencies, it will just trigger its own growth signaling and go on proliferating. The second most important property of a cancer cell is its insensitivity to growth inhibitory signals. Normally, when cells divide, they stop at a certain point, because they are sensitive to the inhibitory signals uh, around them. But cancer cells do not listen to any of these signals, they continue to proliferate. The third uh, uh, important aspect of a cancer cell is, there is an altered cellular metabolism. The cancer cell metabolism is not like a normal cellular metabolism, it is a completely different cellular metabolism. The evade apoptosis, they are resistant to cell death. So, normally a cell when it is damaged or uh, when it is life is uh, span is over, it undergoes apoptosis and natural cell death, whereas a cancer cell evades apoptosis. In other words, uh, it has, in that sense, it has certain immortality. It has, it enables replicative immortality, which means it does not stop replication, it goes on multiplying uh, immortally. There is sustained angiogenesis, which means um, uh, in order for a tumor to grow, it needs uh, nutrition, is not it? So, it has, um, a tumor ensures that it has its feeding vessels and there are new blood vessels that sprout up and uh, which carry nutrition to the uh, tumor and enable it to grow uh, indefinitely. And seven, it is amazing quality to invade and metastasize. I think this is the one property of cancer that makes it extremely difficult to treat uh, uh, um, in a certain patient. And finally, it avoids immune destruction. So, there is a whole lot of work now going on tumor immunity. Um, uh, why everyone uh, does not develop cancer, uh, uh, you know, more frequently than it, what it already is. Uh, that may be because we all have good immune function. And what happens uh, when a person develops cancer? What is the immune reaction to it? And how does immunity play a role uh, in cancers? So, cancers learn to avoid immune destruction. And 
to enable all these things to happen, you have um, the cancers has have genomic instability. Uh, they are fundamental to a cancer cell and they also have inflammatory cells uh, that are drawn into the tumor. So, they also play a role uh, in, in, in allowing all these um, changes to happen within a cancer cell. Right. So, we will go move on to the most uh, important of these all. The first and foremost uh, ability for self-sufficient growth signaling. Now, um, before we actually go into the details of this, the ability of the cancer cell, uh, we will just talk a little about how a normal uh, cell grows or proliferates. Now, this is a picture that shows you the plasma membrane um, uh, surrounding the cytosol of a cell and how is it stimulated to grow or proliferate. Now, this happens due to a series of events that takes place within the uh, uh, cell. The first and uh, first is that there is a growth factor that comes and attaches itself to a growth factor receptor. The what you see in red spanning the uh, plasma uh, cell membrane is the one that is the receptor and what like a knob that is sitting on it is the growth factor. So, the first event that happens is the growth factor sits on the growth factor receptor and activates it. Once it is activated, there are a series of events that takes place within the cytosol, the signal transduction, uh, which is mediated by a whole lot of proteins, um, the RAS being one of the important signal transducer, which ultimately deliver after a cascade of events ultimately deliver certain signals to the nucleus, where transcription is activated. Now, once transcription is activated through transcription factors, a whole lot of proteins are generated that are necessary for building new cells such as um, uh, proteins that form organelles, proteins that are in, uh, uh, involved in various cellular activities, metabolism, organelles and so on and so forth. So, the ultimate signal is delivered for the, to the nucleus. So, there is a growth factor that sits on a growth factor receptor which induces signal transduction uh, due to various proteins. There are uh, there is a cascade of uh, reactions that takes place within the cytosol. Ultimately, it goes into the nucleus, wherein transcription factors are activated and they uh, promote the uh, formation or the transcription of various uh, uh, genes that are, uh, that are necessary for building cellular organelles and finally, uh, the, the cell goes into, uh, into a cell cycle because cyclins, cyclin dependent kinases and all those proteins that are necessary are uh, transcribed. Okay, so, now, um, what happens is each of these are coded by genes, the growth factors, uh, the growth factor receptors, the RAS, the, these all have certain genes uh, that code for them. So, there is a, so when a cancer cell um, uh, forms, there is a gain of function mutation that converts these normal proto-oncogenes to oncogenes. So, there is a mutation that converts all these, whichever, whatever this is a growth factor or a receptor or a RAS gene or a transcription factor from its normal proto-oncogen state to a oncogene. So, let us uh, discuss each of this in a little detail. First, we will go to growth factors. Now, growth factors are uh, normally secreted by cells. They need the growth factors for cellular proliferation, but uh, usually the, the scenario in a normal cell is if a cell uh, secretes a growth factor, it does not have the receptor for it. The receptor for it will be in a neighboring cell. Now, this is how a certain uh, regulation is maintained, so that the, the cell does not sort of become over powerful in itself, it is secreting its own growth factor which acts on itself to 
promote its growth. So, the growth factor is secreted by a cell and the receptors are normally present in the neighboring cells. But what happens in cancer is, uh, the, uh, the cell acquires an ability, the cancer cell, to secrete its own growth factor and it will also uh, have its own receptor. So, this is kind of an autocrine function that happens within a cancer cell. Examples are uh, gliomas, which are special uh, types of uh, uh, cancers that occur in the uh, CNS. They secrete certain growth factors called PDGF or platelet derived growth factor and also express the receptor for that. And then you also have sarcomas. Um, or the mesenchymal tumors that express transforming growth factor alpha and may also express the receptors for the uh, growth factor. So, this is one mechanism by which there is self sufficiency in growth signal. The second mechanism is with something to do with the growth factor receptors. We saw in that diagram that the growth factors uh, comes and attaches itself to the growth factor receptor. Now, if there is a mutation in the gene that encodes these growth factor uh, receptor, it could convert this receptor into a self sufficient kind of uh, a protein in the sense that it will have it will acquire an intrinsic tyrosine kinase activity. So, it may need very little growth factor, even a very minute quantity will enable it to be constantly activated or it may even do away with the growth factor and acquire the ability to self activate itself. So, these are various ways in which the growth factor receptors can get activated. So, they can function as oncoproteins when mutated or overexpressed. So, there, there are examples the, where growth factor receptors are mutated such as ERB1 or EGFR in lung cancer and HER2 uh, is overexpressed in breast cancer. Now, the knowledge of this is very important because we now have drugs that can target these growth factor receptors. For example, EGFR uh, mutations are known in adenocarcinomas of the lung and today we have drugs against the EGFR uh, receptor and that can be used in uh, cases of adenocarcinoma of the lung to treat the patients. And of course, we also know about uh, uh, the HER2 gene that may be overexpressed in breast cancers and we have drugs that can target these uh, uh, the HER2 uh, protein and keep the cancer cells under control. So, these the knowledge of these uh, mutations and the altered products is beneficial because it can help us design better drugs for these cancers. The third uh, uh, pathway in which uh, uh, the cell can become self sufficient is by um, having an increased amount of signal transducing uh, proteins. Now, one of the most important examples of this is the RAS uh, oncogene, because it is the most commonly mutated oncogene in tumors. Now, the, normally the RAS uh, has a function where it flips between an active state and an inactive state. So, it is normally bound to a protein called GDP and it, it, it is bound by this protein and it remains in a quiescent state. When it is activated, the GDP converts itself to GTP and the RAS becomes an active, RAS is released and it becomes active. Now, in a normal cell, this is kept under control because the RAS protein has an intrinsic GTPase activity. In other words, as soon as it is activated, its GTPase activity also becomes activated. So, the GTPase activity converts the GTP back into GDP and it binds the RAS again. So, there is a self contained kind of uh, uh, inhibition in itself. So, the activated RAS. Uh, the, 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 the normal RAS will go back to the quiescent form in a normal cell. But what happens is in cancer cells, this RAS is continuously activated because it is mutated and it starts to uh, send signals downstream and finally, that goes into the nucleus. Now, what are these mutations? These mutations usually interfere with the breakdown of GTP that I already talked about 
or it could lead to the loss of function mutations in what are known as gaps or GTPAs activating proteins. Now, the G gaps are nothing but uh, 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 enzymes that activate the uh, GTPAs. So, they enhance the breakdown of RAS and makes it into a quiescent state. So, in other words, they normally act as tumor suppressors. Now, you could have mutations that interfere with the breakdown of GTP or loss of function mutations in gaps. So, there are lesser number of gaps and that leads to an increased RAS activity. Now, another example apart from RAS is that of the ABL uh, protein. We already saw in one of the previous lectures that you could have uh, translocation of BCR ABL gene in uh, uh, CML, uh, chronic myelogenous leukemia. Now, ABL also acts as a downstream um, uh, sort of t signal transducer and it, it can cause increased activation finally, within the uh, nuclear transcription factors. So, RAS and ABL are examples of uh, proteins um, that can cause signal transduction. Finally, uh, for a cell to proliferate, the signal has to go to the nucleus. So, that is the uh, end point of all the, uh, uh, the, the signals that reach uh, uh, ultimately uh, allowing the cell to proliferate. So, within the nucleus, there are various factors um, uh, or genes, if you may, uh, which, are, which are code for transcription factors, such as the MYC, MIB, JUN, FOS. Uh, transcription factors uh, that, um, that ultimately in turn regulate cyclin dependent kinases. Now, um, let me just show you this picture. Uh, for a cell to go into cycle, uh, cell cycle, um, uh, there is a, a whole lot of events that take place uh, as you can see in this uh, cell cycle diagram. So, it has to go into the synthetic phase, the S phase and then into the G 2 phase, into the mitotic phase and G 1 phase. Now, there are two break points in this cell cycle, one is the G 1 to S phase and the second is the G 2 to M phase, where the cell pauses for a while to see if there is any cell, uh, there is any um, uh, DNA damage or whatever and in some instances, the cell cycle is stopped because if, if it is, um, if there is some damage and the cell is not, it is not in the interest of the cell to further proliferate, then it stops there. But these two are the checkpoints wherein uh, a whole lot of regulation can happen. So, you have cyclins that promote uh, the, the uh, cell to go into the cell cycle and these cyclins actually bind to what are known as cyclin dependent kinases. So, you have the CDKs binding to the cyclins which drive the cell cycle and you also have a regulatory mechanism to this what are known as CDK inhibitors or the CDKIs. So, in a, a, a cell that transforms into a cancer cell, you could have gain of function mutations in involving the CDK4 or the cyclins, which could drive the cell into increased proliferation or you could have the reverse, which is the loss of function mutations that involve the CDK i's or the CDK uh, cyclin dependent kinase inhibitors. So, either of these will result in the cell going into an increased proliferative state. Now, having said all this, we should remember that with all these mutations, um, uh, still the cell needs that it, it uh, the genes that regulate cell senescence and cell death must be disabled for all these mutations to effectively um, uh, convert a normal cell into a malignant cell. Okay, in summary, uh, uh, we have today uh, in this uh, lecture. Um, uh, listed the hallmarks of uh, cancer, the eight hallmarks and uh, in some detail we have uh, talked about the self-sufficient growth signaling of cancer cells and uh, we have discussed that oncoproteins may promote uncontrolled cell proliferation um, either by uh, the growth factors become independent uh, stimuli for the cells. 
the mutations in growth factor receptors causing increased tyrosine kinase activity. We saw examples of EGFR and HER2. There could be amplifications uh, of receptors that is HER2 in uh, breast cancer. There could be mutations of signal transduction genes, example the RAS gene which is mutated in a whole lot of cancers. We can have overproduction of transcription factors, we, uh, we saw the MYC uh, gene uh, can be uh, the MYC pr protein can be produced in, uh, in a big number. Uh, when there is a translocation, we saw the example of Burkitt lymphoma when it gets um, translocated next to an immunoglobulin gene. And finally, we may have mutations that activate cyclins which drive the cell into an increased proliferation or we may have mutations that inactivate the cyclin dependent kinases. Uh, both of these actions will cause an increased cellular proliferation. So, all these um, uh, changes can ultimately lead to the transformation of a benign uh, cell into a malignant one. Thank you.